YouTube, this is Shirley426, and today we have the review of the newly released Robot Damashi Gym Type C Ver Anime. I am very happy and excited to review this because, it, once again, it's also one of those Gym Type uh, variants, Gym Type mobile suits in Robot Damashi format, but not only just Robot Damashi, it's the Ver Anime line. So, for those who don't know, the Gym Type C, I believe, in terms of anime wise, we've seen it for the first time in the. Uh, the 0083 Stardust Memory. Granted, uh, there was a very similar looking variant in the uh, 08MS team, but that's actually more of a prototype thing, So what, and that was a space variant. So here we have the figure, and I believe this has arrived uh, about last day, I believe, or, or yesterday, or, yeah, I think it was yesterday that arrived, and I'm very happy to review this. Um, so yeah, uh, so this what I've noticed, noticed about these Ver anime figures is that most of them, most of these figures that have an HUC ver, uh, counterpart, there some of them didn't really have much much difference other than like how the small details looked, and like maybe articulation differences. Uh, comparing when you compare like some HUCs were very old compared to the Robot Dawashi version, but this one uh, was a very interesting uh, comparison. So you can see at the background over here, I have brought out my HUC version, and it's going to be a very interesting comparison when you actually look at it side by side. Okay, so but, we, but before we start, let's go out on with our usual routine on components. So first of all, what you get, of course, is the Gym Type C Ver anime uh, figure itself. And on the backpack, you get the Beam Saber. Uh, I already added the Beam Saber there. You only get one, so there's no second Beam Saber hilt. And then... Uh, Hand-wise, we get the multi-purpose hands, but in this case, these hands for Robot Damashis would mean that these are the hands that are meant for holding the shield handle and the beam sabers. And that's pretty much it for the mobile suit itself. And here we have some other stuff. So let's go over with the equipment stuff. So first of all, the usual, we get a shield. Very basic shield. We get these square holes that are meant for effect parts, but they don't come with... This figure does not provide that. Here we have the shield handle that can be taken off and is on a peg. And here we have this part which is a ball joint connection where uh, on here if you don't want to use the handle you can always use these parts where this one if you want to have the shield uh, facing downward this is the one you use. Uh, if you want to have the shield facing the side of the mold suit this is what you use. And this one if you want to have if you want to connect this to the backpack this is what you use and I've, I've demonstrated this uh, a few times already on my previous reviews and here we have the machine gun well uh, the, I think this is like the ba most basic machine gun uh, from the line I believe but yeah pretty good and then here we have this connection which is actually meant to store the machine gun on the backpack like like this and I will demonstrate that later but it's a very cool feature if you ask me and then here we have one of the unique weapons that this that I believe this is like a, a original weapon for this well, this is technically the, I believe, is called the Hyper Bazooka. Now, it looks kind of similar to the Gundam Mark II's, but I believe that it, this is not exactly the same. Uh, and it's, you know, pretty basic and plain looking. And when I first saw this, I thought the handle would not move, but the handle does move at, as well. And then you can actually take off the ammo pack, but since you only get one, so there's nothing else to do with it other than attaching on the bazooka. And for some, at, at first I was kind of curious what this, this metal section actually moves like this. Um, the main reason why this is the case is to store the bazooka onto the back skirt armor because if it's like this, you're going to have some limitations. So th what they did is that you can move this here and yeah, there's no more issues going on when it comes to storing the bazooka. And like most robot technologies, we have a hand rack. So I use the hand rack to show you guys all the hands. So uh, as I mentioned, the ones that are on the mobile suit is the multi-purpose hand. So let's see what we else got. So here we have the fully open hand. And here we have the semi-open hand. Here we have now on the manual they don't really mention where to use these, but these are also beam saber holding hands, but not not instead of like a 90 degree vertical angle. This is actually more of, of a tilted angle. So this is the one I, that I usually use for beam saber posing. And then here we have the trigger finger for left and right. So yeah, so we get 10 hands in total. Okay, so now let's look at the effect parts. So first of all, uh, we get two thruster effect parts, which is I'm. Which I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm actually happy they included these, but, but here's the problem. So if you look at the backpack, yeah, we have four thruster effect parts, and then there's two more on the on the back skirt lower part, and then there should be four holes or two holes each in each foot. So not enough. So they 
basically they tell you the more you buy then the more you can actually utilize these as well but I'm just I'm kind of lazy to take off from their boxes other separate boxes so yeah and then here we have two beam saver effect parts one uh, the same ones that we saw from the GPO one for anime uh, the beautiful bent version I absolutely love this beam saver effect part than the the old versions but I think this is more I think uh, since this is here and then the upcoming the other uh, Rotashi, I, I, I pre-ordered this does not have this but has the more basic design so I think they're going to differentiate this by like timeline or something like that and then here we have the more straight looking beam saver once again beautiful effect part and then we get a extra antenna because once again these antennas V fins are one of the most fragile par parts in in the figure slash in any kit so just in case if you break yours you get an extra so that is very very good Okay, so now let's get on to the review. So before we start, I'm going to actually go on and do the comparison first. So the, the main reason why I was surprised is not the color. The color, I think, uh, the Ver Anime definitely did a better job. Because keep in mind, the Ver Anime uh, Robotology figures, they try to focus on how they look like in the anime, or at least in their art style. So that's what they did. And as you can see, the color... Obviously, the Robot Donashi version did, did, did a more natural looking sand color, or if you ask me, that's for me. And then, if you look at the comparison by side by side, you can actually see now this one actually has a good amount of difference. You can see the Ver Anime actually is a much more taller uh, figure, and then you can see that it's more slim and more sleek looking design, while the HUC version is more clunky and definitely has that mechanical look. So yeah. This was definitely a interesting comparison, but now let's go on to the articulation. Now, mo like no doubt, like most ver anime figures should have like amazing articulation, but just to make sure, we have to check that out. So let's see on the head. So the head definitely everything is be uh, beautifully sculpted. I believe the head camera is colored, while the visor is actually a clear piece. So the head can go down that much, and then up they. For some reason, like all Robotology figures, they do go up a lot. And then, 360 twist should be possible. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it for the head. Okay, so for the main body, uh, the body, I believe, has a great ab crunch. Yeah, we do have a nice ab crunch, and, and it does not feel loose at all. Because some figures, they do sometimes feel like it's kind of unstable, but this one is just feeling fine. 360 twist on the entire body, not possible, because I think there are some parts colliding in the inside. And I believe if we're going to be more specific, or at least the masquerade version actually has a core block inside. And so anything that has a core block inside should not be able to go 360, I believe. Okay, uh, and let's look at the shoulders. I believe the shoulders do have the, these parts where you can actually move more like that. And the, the body folds inside like that. Uh, I believe that's the case. And then you can go to the side 90 degrees arm wise but we can actually go more if we do this so that is actually pretty good very good actually and the 360 twist on the arm itself is possible we have a nice 90 degree I'm uh, not 90 degree I mean double joint to bend and then we have the your typical robot downwards style hands where the ball joints are not on the hand but are on the arm itself and we here we have each uh, we have holes on the lower arm here for to connect the shields okay uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And obviously, 360 on the entire arm is also possible. And they did a pretty good job on the painting, like the small details right here on the red. Because I believe the roll without, I'm mean, not the roll, I mean the HUC version does not provide any stickers for those as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, okay, so let's see. Now let's look at the front sticker. Now, for me, I wouldn't say this was an issue, but while posing, uh, while posing the kit, or not the kit, uh, posing the figure or doing certain poses, the front skirts did pop up. Pop, uh, pop out, I mean, uh, because the way how they're connected is that they're each ball joint connected to the inside like a typical H sheet, but the ball joint, I believe the, the length of the ball joint is not as long as you think, like how a normal H you see would be. So it's like they do sometimes pop out depending on the pose. So when you're actually moving the leg, legs, just make sure uh, the front skirts are actually like facing up or going up. So yeah. And then we have the side skirts that do go a little bit to the side, and then back skirt does not move at all. And regarding back skirts, we can actually flip this section up, if I can. Come on. And we can store the bazooka right over here. Okay, so regarding your legs, here we go. So we can go to the front 90 degrees. If it weren't for the front skirts, we can go more. 
back not so much because of the back skirt and it doesn't move and then here we have the legs that can go 90 degrees to the side that which is pretty basic when you think about it and then we have a nice double jointed bend and then we have a nice pivot joint going on here but kind of on the stiff side and i believe this thing does does have like a small toe bend or something yeah we do have like a small toe bend that goes upwards downward not so much but upwards a lot but still stiff okay i think we've seen and oh yeah regarding the legs we do have a side swivel going well the main connection is a is a ball joint right over here it's a ball joint but i believe there should be like a, sm a small movement side swivel going on here but not like the side swivel that goes 360 so uh there is just basically enough so you can pull off any poses you need with the legs Okay, so we've seen the basics of the articulation, so I'll be right back with the first set of equipment and, and uh, to explain you guys how each equipment works or how you can be stored onto the mobile suit. So I'll be right back. Okay, here we have the first set of equipment. Basically, I could I slapped on everything I could on this on the figure. So uh, what you see on the left hand is I, add, I added the beam saver and then the curved effect part. And hand-wise, I gave it the hand that holds the beam saver in a more angle instead of a 90 degree vertical angle. And on the right arm, we have the shield, and then the shield connector is the one that has the ball joint connection that allows you to attach it to the side. And then on the back, I've attached the machine gun and the bazooka. So you can see, for weapon-wise, you can attach pretty much everything that is provided with the figure onto the figure itself. So let's talk about in, in detail. So uh, I'm going to take this off the stand. Um, so for now, the way how the weapon works, so... Uh, I think I'll take off the bazooka first because the bazooka was pretty much self-explanatory. But oh yeah, so ooh, I think the backpack just came out. So yeah, uh, that's a new thing I just figured out. You can actually take off the backpack, so that's actually interesting. So if that means we can use other backpacks on this, if as long as the connection is correct. So this is how the machine gun works. So um, when you take the figure out of the box, the box, um, I mean the figure itself should have the backpack obviously looking natural so when you first get the figure it should be looking like this and you can see there's uh, there's only one panel here it's because obviously the beam saver is right over here so you have to pull or plug this thing off out of the uh, backpack and then it re will reveal a hole and then this is where you connect this you attach the machine gun so the way how the machine gun is connected right here at the moment is it's actually clipped on so you can see this is actually more of a clip clip type thing and then we can see we have these uh, holes engraved here on machine gun so you can you need to attach like this so the handle has to be facing to the to the back and then the the ammo clip should be facing towards the mobile suit and then all you need to do is just connect and there you go you have this here and uh, regarding and I would suggest you do the bazooka first and then the machine gun so as I mentioned if the the main reason why this moves is that if it's just like this, we're going to have slightly a bit problem because it's going to actually collide with the inside here. So what you do is just do this. And it works like a charm. And here, as I mentioned, here we have the bent, uh, bent beam saver effect part. So the main reason why I use the hands, not the straight hands like the one that you see here, is that this actually holds it in more angle. And I, uh, after trying a lot of slashing poses, obviously the beam... The curved beam effect part is a big thing, but yeah, it just looks more natural when you look at it. And regarding the shield part, yeah, uh, you can if you want to, you could use both the shield and the handle, but it's just really painful to connect. And yeah, if you want to have the shield facing downwards, the other connection is the one you use. Alright, so we've seen the first set of equipment. I'll be right back with the second set of equipment. Okay, here we have the second set of equipment, which is basically the shield and the bazooka. Now, I think one of the main uh, issues or re uh, regarding this figure is that a lot of people, or some people, were kind of pointing out that the bazooka is so big. Why is the bazooka so big? I don't really know why this is a big problem. I mean, when you think about a bazooka, um, I, I think of something very, a very large weapon, instead of something that actually fits my size. So I think this is actually pretty good. I mean, I mean, it's a big bazooka, meaning that it definitely feels and looks more powerful than the one that the ARC-78 uses. So yeah, I don't know why this is a big issue, but I actually personally like it. And it works pretty well. Uh, def it, well, I, I will admit that the bazooka kind of looks big for the mobile suit, but still, if it can hold it, it's fine. 
that's totally fine. And if you guys are wondering, yes, while having the bazooka, you can still have the machine gun stored on the back. But of course, this will it will actually kind of affect your posing because if you have the machine gun here, then the the bazooka will be more on this side instead of like beyond here. So yeah. And just to make sure for those who don't know how these thruster effect parts work is that you basically all these thrusters on the mobile suit should have like a small hole that you can attach these effect parts. So that's how it works. So obviously if this one works then the rest four should work. The one that's on the back uh, on the lower here should also connect. Yeah, but uh, keep in mind there should be, there are technically like two different sizes. So these are the what I call the big ones. The big ones are definitely obviously big, and there's are also small short ones. So I believe like the smaller the thruster is, the the small ones you actually have to use. And why is this not coming out? I'm actually getting kind of frustrated here. There we go. And then there's also ones on the feet. So yeah, and these. Oops, sorry about that. So you can actually attach these onto the feet as well. Now keep in mind that these pegs are actually not straight; they're actually on the angle. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I think we're pretty much almost done, so I'll be right back with the last set of equipment. Okay, here we have the last set of equipment, so uh, there's nothing too special. I just gave it the machine gun and the beam saber, so that's pretty much it regarding this figure. I mean, the figure itself is pretty good, and then uh, the equipment setup is pretty basic when you think about it. I mean, technically the ARC-78 should be also pretty similar, but it def definitely the, the Gundam types definitely have more equipment to them, but... Being a gym type, I don't expect them to have a lot of stuff. But yeah, this is a very great figure I would definitely recommend. And regarding the hand, yes, this is the hand that that looks like when you're actually holding it vertically. So that's pretty much it for the review. Now definitely I would recommend this. For those who are big collectors of Robot Damashi figures, and those who are a big fan of gyms like me, this is definitely a good Robot Damashi to try out. Because it actually looks very different to its own HUC counterpart. Because... Uh, like the gun cannon ver anime, there weren't there weren't too much differences uh, when it comes with the between the HUC version and the ver anime version, but this one actually shows a good amount of differences, so it's definitely worth trying out as well. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the newly released Roa Dawachi Gym Type C ver anime. If you guys got any questions or request a new comment below, I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.